بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رحمة العالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I think this is my second time here and it's an honor to be here again I didn't know I was giving a speech at this moment hence I'm a little bit off like the Miami Heat were yesterday but I ain't that off but um, tonight we will show you why it's called Boss Town, not Boston, when we play. But it's great to be here. And more of a blessing, really, uh, Imam Majid is a very, you know, is a teacher, is a friend, is a beloved person. And his community is a trendsetting community, mashallah. And also to be with Sheikh Omar uh, Suleiman, who's really an up and coming, talented, very moderate, incredibly talented, and eloquent speaker and scholar that, you know, I hope you take advantage of him uh, while he's here. It's very rare that you'll find someone his age uh, that Allah has blessed to have such an ability that he has, mashallah. So we ask Allah to increase him. And actually I saw him a week ago uh, in Ikna, and now we're here again, so it's like two weeks running. So we'll see how long we can keep it going in this best of seven series here. But it's just really great to be with Omar. And Omar is someone who really encouraged people to try to benefit from him. Take advantage of these younger people like uh, Abdul Nasser Janga is another example of someone I think you should really try to benefit from. Muslima Permel for the sisters. She's a young woman who's just graduated from Egypt. So you have this young, you know, mashallah, the Avengers, I guess, type crew that's coming out and... Omar is really at the head of that, and, and you really hope you'll be able to benefit from him, inshallah. I hope I also will be able to benefit from him as well. So the topic I was given is Dean over Desires, and what I'm going to do is really just talk on a few issues that I think are core and central, if you will, to the problem. And the first is that understanding who we are and our purpose. And I understand we hear this all the time. I was created to worship. God created me to worship. But what does that really mean? And then that touches on what type of information, what type of things are falling into my heart and my mind that de develop a sense of being that I have about myself. And there was a scholar who he really pointed to this in a beautiful way. He said, if you had a home, a very valuable home, would you leave the doors to that home open for anyone to enter? Would you just allow anyone to walk up into your crib and, you know, turn on the Comcast or, you know, PTV or whatever and eat your samosas and chill? You know, or maybe if our Somali brothers and sisters, you're Iyun, you know, you wouldn't allow that to happen. So he said, well, that's the metaphor of the heart and that your eyes are doors that are potentially left open. Your ears are doors that are potentially left open. Your mouth, your tongue, your hands, these are all doors that need to be secured because our relationship with Allah, and I talked about this at Ikna and I wasn't able to finish, so it's nice to pick off after that long comma for the week. But our relationship with Allah begins with ma'arif, begins with how we understand and know him. And Ar-Razi, rahimahullah, mentioned that there are two ways to do this. And he said, one is by reflecting on the favors of God. You know, I became Muslim when I was 20. One of the things that caused me to become Muslim is I used to go look at the stars. And I used to go out at night. Oklahoma, it's like, mashallah, you can see everything. You can see Pluto with the naked eye. It's just dark. There is no city, right? You could just see forever. And it's absolutely beautiful. And I would be with my friend, and we would, you know, be doing certain things. And I would say to him, man, someone had to make this, man. Like, some, someone made this. This is incredible. And we'd have this discussion about who God was. And that's one of the things that led me to become Muslim. The other way is by someone who really comes to the conclusion that God is God, man. Allah is Allah. And after that, they are able to create a definition of reality around them. And both are mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times will mention his ni'am, 
his favors, and didn't mention his ibadah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'buru. So he mentions that he's the Lord, he's the Lord of everything, he's the most gracious, the most merciful, the master on a day when no one will have control except him, and then he orders you to worship him. So he mentions his favors, and then he mentions his worship. That in the heavens and the earth and the creation of the night and day, there are signs for people. So that's one methodology of coming to a conclusion. You know, oh Allah, you have not created this batila without any aim or any purpose. The other means are for those people that Allah touches their heart. And they are immediately exposed to his sultan, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his wahdaniyyah, his oneness and his unity. And this is the maqam of Umar. So here we see it inverted. Remember this. And those of you Islamic school teachers, we really have to begin to have people who are very familiar with wahi, that we can start to teach these trends to our children. How do you know God? What are the methodologies of understanding and knowing Allah? And the other form is that Allah says to Umar in the 24th chapter of the Quran to us in general, indeed I am your Lord, there is no God but me, so worship me. So one is through creation, knowing God, the other way is knowing God and then knowing his creation. And this is extremely important because this helps us to create a real definition of who we are. There's a book that mothers and fathers you should read and young adults, so sexy, so soon. Read that book, man. The objectification of women in American society and in the world, the pornification of the world where how we look at each other is rooted in a hyper-sexualized culture. So women are no longer women, they're, huh. And men are no longer men, they're six-packs. But Islam, if we're able to create an identity based on Tawheed and Allah is our Lord, we understand that people are the ibad of Allah and that they're human beings, not objects of my desires. But let's keep it on the individual level. So that means that in order to create a solid foundation for who I am and what I'm about, I need to have a really, really, really strong, healthy relationship with Revelation. And this is the importance of the Qur'an. And the centrality of its message is to identify who you are. As one of our mashaykh said that the creed of Islam answers the following important questions. These are the most important. Number one, min ayna jit, where have I come from? And where am I headed? And why am I here? And what's my ultimate destination? These are four fundamental questions that Islam identifies for us. Because when we are not able to create a proper definition for ourselves, then that leads to acting in ways which are contrary to the reason God created us. And that's for worship. And having that relationship with revelation is key in developing that understanding of who we are and our purpose in life. Imam al-Ghazali mentions a beautiful example of this during the time of Omar. And what's interesting is it's almost like a, like a study that was done. Because Omar would go and study the people, istiqra. And he came upon this little slave boy. And this was the lowest, you know, member, if you will, economically of society at their time. And when Omar came to this young boy and he said to him, Hey, sell me one of your sheep, man. Hook me up, yo. One of them sheep right there. If you're from the south, you know what that means. And this young boy said, I can't because they belong to my master. And then Omar, he said to him, but your master is on the other side of, of, of the hill. He's not going to see if you sell me these sheep. And he said, I'm not talking about that master. I'm talking about the master in the heavens. So Al-Ghazali comments, look how ma'arif, the understandings, and this young boy's identity allows him to take a stance which, you know, now you got people going to take PhDs in Aqeedah to get this understanding because of the centrality of revelation in, the, in that time. Twitter in the time of Omar was the Quran. Fads in the time of Omar were based on Islamic kind of environmental realities. That's why Islamic schools are very important, by the way, because you create a set of norms based on Islam. 